What's up, everybody? My name is Mike. I am the founder of the Fox Valley Whiskey Society, and today we are going to be doing a fresh crack. This is the Smoke Wagon, uncut, unfiltered. Now, full disclosure, this is one that I have had before. It is one that I have owned before, um, but this one in particular is just one that's really hard to find down here in South Carolina. Um, some of you guys know I moved last year from, from Illinois, got out of the snow, the cold, gloominess, and I moved down to South Carolina, to Myrtle Beach. Let me just grab my, my notepad real quick so I can make some notes on this. Um, South Carolina is kind of a black hole for bourbon. Um, there's really not a whole lot going on down here. Um, a lot of times I find that I have to go into North Carolina, which is a control state, into Ocean Isle Beach. It's about 40, 45 minutes north of here, right across the border in North Carolina, which is a control state, which for me is awesome because I don't get screwed over on price. So, boom. Let's try it out. Now, again, guys, this is one that I've had before. Uh, most of you guys are pretty familiar with Smoke Wagon. Um, you know, they're pretty much everywhere now at this point. Um, MGP sourced products out of, uh, I think it's H and H and C distillery out of Las Vegas. Um, their master blender, I guess we'll call him and master distiller, Aaron, fantastic guy, really fun to follow on, on, uh, Facebook and on Instagram. So we're going to dive into this. We're going to let it sit for, for just a second here. So this one is coming in at 57.49% alcohol. Um, let's see, out of Las Vegas, 750 ml bottle, distilled in Indiana. Date bottled September 1st, 2021, batch number 92. One of the things that I absolutely love about Smoke Wagon is the bottle itself. This is such... An ornate bottle. There's a lot of detail in this bottle. I love the sunken wax seal um, that they do on their bottles. I love the, the font. I love the glass itself. I love that it's tall. It's slender. It's just it's a, such a great looking bottle uh, to have on your shelf. Um, so for 114, basically 115 proof, um, 57 point. We'll call it 57.5 percent. So we'll call it 115 proof. Um, I mean, just an absolutely wonderful bourbon to have on the shelf. But again, this is something that I don't see down here in South Carolina. I did have to go to North Carolina to actually find it. You guys up in Illinois, back home in the Fox Valley, probably find this stuff a lot more frequently than I do. I poured myself kind of a big sample, but we'll swirl it around a little bit and let it air out. The nose on this one is not very strong. Just gonna put my put my notes here, nose, palette, finish. Nice legs, nice thick legs. Not a super dark color. I don't know what the average age is on this on this batch. Of course, um, this is a small batch bourbon, so there's no age statement on it. The nose, get a little bit of toast, some honey. So a typical, you know, vanilla, things like that. Ooh, a butterscotch. It's a brown sugar, brown sugar and butterscotch. It's an interesting note in there that I'm trying to put my finger on. Mm. Oh, honey, that brown sugar comes through. 
sweet oak. Caramel candy, caramel chews. I think maybe that's that note that I can't quite pull out of there. It's like those candies that you <clears throat> find in your grandparents' coffee table. Some fruit notes that I pull out of there too. I don't want to say, I want to say get like a pear, not so much an apple. So I don't want to say like <clears throat> orchard fruits. I get pear more than anything. Like a like a baked fruit, like a stewed fruit. I know it's, I think that's probably what that note is that I'm pulling, like an apple pie, and some of that buttery toast, a little bit of graham cracker. I'll put graham cracker on the nose. I wonder if maybe that's a note that I'm pulling out in the palate. A little bit of toasted marshmallow, too. Toasted marshmallow. Finish. Finish is fantastic. It's definitely a sipping bourbon. Um... I think the MSRP on this one, what did I pay? 70 75 It's a strange MSRP. Now, again, I go to North Carolina for this. North Carolina is a control state. They're not allowed to gouge you on prices, so whatever the MSRP is, that's what they have to charge. <clears throat> so we'll say $70, bucks, $69.95, we'll, whatever, we'll call it. Really, really fantastic. 115 proof, $70 MSRP. Um, this is, again, the uncut unfiltered uh, smoke wagon with the white label. Um, again, something that's not really readily available down here in at least South Carolina. You guys up uh, back home in Illinois, it's a different story for you guys. You guys probably have this all over the place, but South Carolina is a black hole for, for bourbon. There's there's not a lot, not a lot coming in because not a lot of people are buying it. I'm going to take another... Take another sip of water. And I like to, I like to sip on water. <clears throat> Some people like to sip on mineral water. I like cold water, just to coat the tongue, coat my cheeks, roof of my mouth, kind of help dissolve some more of those flavor compounds, some more of those little molecules that are sitting around that are that are causing all those flavors of of uh, honey, brown sugar, sweet oak, caramel pear, toasted marshmallow. Kind of helps open them up a little bit more. So when you take that second sip, you go in for the second analyzation, we'll call it. You get some new flavors out of there. I haven't gone to the finish just yet. Just kind of seeing if there's anything new after... Rinsing my palate out with water. See if anything new comes up. The pear and that toasted marshmallow. It's definitely a little bit more pronounced. I had a uh, not that uh, not that long ago. I think it was last week. Um, sampled uh, Bomberger's Declaration Bourbon 2021. And I pulled out pomegranate. It was the most unique thing that I've ever pulled out of a, a bourbon before. A palate, um, a flavor note. Never experienced that before in a bourbon. So now I always kind of, I'm trying to look for more of those dark red fruits. I don't find any, anything in this one. I get pear. I do get a little bit of, it's going to be, going to be strange. You guys ever eat like a red apple and you finish the, the actual inside of the apple and that the, the flesh, the, the skin, or I'm sorry, the skin of the apple. You get that 
kind of dry, kind of pulls the moisture out of out of your mouth. This is going to be really weird. And another thing that I've never pulled out of a bourbon before, or at least not that I've noticed, apple skin, but red apple. It's got it's just slightly dry. Slightly dry. Well, the finish, it's not very long at all. I'm going to say medium short. Medium short finish. Slightly dry. Slight dry. That apple, that apple skin comes out a little bit more in the, uh, in the finish. It's been sitting for port about, what do we wait, 11 minutes? It's that time to open up. Aerate a little bit. Some of the alcohol is evaporated. Starting to get into more of the, the deeper, richer flavors of the bourbon. That apple skin, I really can't get past that. That apple skin and that pair of those those orchard those orchard fruits, which initially at the beginning of the palate, before I sampled my rinsed my palate out with the water, I didn't get apple. I got only pear. So I didn't want to say orchard fruit because that kind of it's kind of all encompassing. But I got pear more than anything. It's sweetness from the pear. As it fades, I get more of the apple skin. That dryness starts to come through. Starts to starts to suck the moisture out of out of your mouth. Finish medium short, slightly dry. A little bit more of that apple in there. It's caramel chews are coming through a lot more. So I'm going to put caramel. I don't get any butterscotch or anything like that. Vanilla is very very faint. Vanilla is a very common compound. The lignin in the wood <clears throat> after the the barrel is toasted and charred. The lignin, which is what holds the wood together, breaks down into a compound called vanillin. And that's what gives you that vanilla flavor in pretty much every bourbon that is <clears throat> aged for any period of time in, in charred oak, which, as you guys know, in order to be called bourbon, it has to be aged in a charred oak container. I'm going back to the palate. There's something I'm I'm getting, but I can't can't put my finger on it. I can't pull it out. I can't really figure out exactly what it is. Try to add a little bit of water to my mouth. Kind of dissolve some of those compounds. The orchard fruit comes out a lot more. The oak, the sweet oak. Definitely is very, very pronounced. Really a fantastic bourbon. For $70, you know, I think for $70, really what you're paying for is the name more than anything. Um, Smoke Wagon is, uh, you know, kind of the hot, the hot item right now. They just recently stopped doing single barrel picks because they're, they're, regular everyday product is is flying off the shelves and they're having a hard time just keeping it you know keeping it going um they're doing a fantastic fantastic job down there in las vegas um you know hnc distilling co you know this they're putting out a fantastic product you know aaron is is very very good at, at, at sourcing these barrels and picking these barrels from mgp and blending them together into a product that is just really really characteristically unique to H and C distilling and specifically to smoke wagon bourbon. Um, I definitely recommend trying to search it out. If it's something that you're looking for, if, if, you know, if, if you're on the, uh, the, the, the Facebook groups, the Facebook sites, you know, the bourbon, the bourbon clubs, the bourbon groups, a lot of people are talking about smoke wagon. I mean, and rightfully so it's a fantastic bourbon. Is it worth $70? That's up to you. Um, for me in particular, I don't know that if again, I were, in the position being in South Carolina, like I said, there's not a lot smoke wagon really doesn't, doesn't come down here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that's sitting on, on the shelf, the liquor store. It's not something that's sitting behind the bar at, 
at an on-premise restaurant or, 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 or um, you know, anything like that. So it's really hard to come by. If I do come by it again, am, am I going to spend $70 on it? To be totally honest with you, probably not. If this is a 40 to $50 bottle, um, yeah, I probably, I probably would. I would be, I would 100, 100% be a buyer at, at around $40, $70 maybe is a little bit of a stretch. Is it, is it a great bourbon? Yes, absolutely. But really what you're paying for here, I think is really more of the, of the name of smoke wagon to have that on your shelf. Um, some people would completely disagree and say, this is absolutely a $70 or hundred dollar bottle of bourbon. And that's your, you know, that's, that's your own opinion for me in particular. It's not something that I think I'm going to, I'm going to spend $70 on again. Um, I did really like that apple skin note that I don't really pull out, uh, of a lot of bourbons, that orchard fruit, the pear apple, um, the toasted marshmallow is really unique. I really did enjoy that. The finish I thought could be a little bit longer. Sometimes I like a longer finish for this one because that apple skin and that orchard fruit, I really wanted that to carry over in the finish. If I were to rate this one out of five, I really like to only give a one out of five rating. I don't like to give, I don't like to rate on the 100 point scale. Me in particular, I would say I'm going to write this down. I'm going to go 3.75 out of five. And that's still a really, really good rating. Um, $70 good? No. Um, given the fact that it's a $70 bourbon, I think I might go a three out of five. If this were four, a 40 or a $50 bourbon, 3.75, even four out of five all day. Just the overall value I think is, would be really spectacular if this were a 40 or $50 bottle. Being that it's $70, I don't think it's hundred percent worth that price tag, but still very, very good. Um, if it's something that you're looking for, if it's something that you're after, if it's something that you need to complete a vertical collection of for smoke wagon, absolutely spend whatever your heart desires. If you see it on the shelf for $70, um, you know, go for it. If I saw this on the shelf for $40, I'd probably buy two or three of them. Um, but for $70, one is enough for me. Um, that being said, everybody, I'm going to finish this one off, take some more notes. Cheers. We'll see you next Wednesday.